I'm seeing beyond my circumstance The joy that I have is my inheritance Joy, this is the joy of the The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, He is my home. The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He's walking beside me and he knows my pain. Got the beginning at the end. Yeah. Got right there in the midst of it. Joy. This is the joy of the Lord. Oh, joy. This is the joy of the Lord. The joy. The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, He is my hope. The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my Good morning, City of Light. Good morning, City of Light. Good morning. I don't know about you, but who has joy in this place? Does anybody have joy in this house? I don't know about you, but just waking up this morning was joyful to me. Just being able to wake up this morning. I give God all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. We have basic. Basic is having a worship service on Monday night at 6.30. Anybody is welcome. I don't know about you, but worship is just worship. And if you come, you can worship God. It doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter what time it is. But this is a time to say, I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you no matter what day it is, no matter what time it is. You get all the glory, you get all the honor. So you are welcome to come to this worship night. City of Light is having a family, uh, has a family Christmas tree. We're asking each family to bring a bulb that represents your family. Any kind of ornament, whatever that represents your family, we want it to hang on this tree. Amen? The tree will be in the fellowship hall in the back. And I, I believe that's just a celebration all together that shows that we're coming together as a house, as a family. Amen? Vision night. I want everybody everybody who is a partner of City of Light to come to Vision Night. Vision Night is a time of us letting you know what's going on in this church. Amen? If you want to know the details, if you want to know the background, if you want to know who's who and who's doing what, that is the place that you come. It is on December 6th at 5 p.m. Amen? If you need any more information about City of Light, please go to our website at cityoflightelmira.com. Now it is offering time. Amen? So, our offering has been a little low. 
and we God has just been blessing us. And we know that it's the Christmas season and all that, but we're just asking you to have faith in how you give. We are being very diligent about how we spend your money. Amen? We give all God the glory and all the praise about how we receive the gifts that you give us, and we spend it according to the way God tells us to give it to us, all right? If you want to give, we want you to text 844-967-2043. Follow the directions if you haven't done it before, and it'll tell you everything you have to do. Go to our website, click the word give. You can also give that way, and you can also give by check. The check uh, envelopes are in the back of the seat. And you can put your envelope in those black boxes on your way out. Amen. God bless you. All right. So as we start our service this morning, um, we're going to do something a little bit different today. We've done this before, but we're actually going to have a testimony service this morning. So throughout our worship and song, we're going to have some different people come up and share testimonies. And if you're one of those people, then hopefully you know when you're going. Um, but for me, I have one that I'm going to share real quick, and then we're going to jump back into these songs this morning. And mine is in the form of a picture. So if I could have that picture up. There it is. We were decorating this week. Our lovely team helped come and decorate. And as we were decorating, I said, I wonder what last year looked like. And this is last year. So for those of you who have been with us throughout the church plant, or even just for a little bit, know that planting a church is difficult and sometimes it takes a lot of grace for yourself to know that we're only two years old and when this picture came up when I looked up look at it up on YouTube to see I was like wow last year we had a different stage last year we had a monstrosity of an organ last year we didn't have these nice little privacy walls so you could go to the bathroom without everybody noticing like <laughs> last year we didn't have any of this stuff so this is just a huge testimony for me and for us as City of Light for what God is doing here. So let's stand and worship, singing the joy of the Lord. See 
Somebody to help me. The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, He is my hope. The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He rules the world with truth. give God glory for Pastor Jeff and that testimony, amen, that, um, yeah, we're two years old, hallelujah, and, and for any of you who have raised a two-year-old or who has seen a two-year-old in action, amen, sister, Laura, there, there, there are some challenges that come with being two, but there's a long life in front of those, amen, I believe as City of Light that there is a long life and a great mission in front of us, but we're just a little bit unstable, amen, sometimes in our, in our walking, but we're getting there, amen, by God's grace, we're getting there, and so to see a visual from last year to this year, I thank you, Pastor Jeff, for that testimony. We're going to continue on with the testimonies of those who have truly seen the goodness of the Lord, amen, for uh, the month of November. We've been journeying together in this series entitled Taste and See. And it's during this time that we've spoken about being spiritually disciplined and all of the blessings that come when we're pursuing God's goodness on purpose. But there was a couple weeks ago when we were singing and we were worshiping together and we, we actually paused to, to speak about the times when God and his goodness is actually pursuing us. When his, pursu his, his pursuit is actually toward you, when his goodness is actually chasing you down, amen. And, and we had this conversation about what life looks like when God's goodness is pursuing us. And so there's times when God and all of your splendor and all of your goodness, he's just running after us. And so what we've done is we've invited a few of our parishioners to come and share. To come and share briefly for about two to three minutes about where they've tasted and seen God's goodness during this season. And so we're going to be intentional about holding them to two or three minutes. Um, some of you have, have been in church with me before. Some of you have been in church, uh, the old church, Pastor Cook, the old Baptist church, where if you go a little bit too long, they will pull your, your, your coattail. Yeah. Right, right. They, they, they used to have all of the preachers sit up behind the, the person speaking. And if the person speaking spoke for too long, there would be a little pull on his coattail. And that, that, that meant, come on with it, wrap it up. So, so I'm going to hold us to these two or three minutes, amen. I've even left my iPad there, and, and I'm, I'm operating off of my phone so that I can stay streamlined because we do have fellowship after this, amen. We still have one more Taste and See series um, that the Hodges have provided for us, so we're going to have fellowship over in the fellowship hall immediately following service where we're going to Taste and See and fellowship together. But I'm going to honestly hold each of us to this. But our first member of, of City of Light Church that we'll be sharing um, where they've tasted and seen God's goodness is, is none other than my own son and daughter-in-law, um, Cairo and Bree Shazer. Amen? Yeah. 
everybody. <laughs> How we doing? Good. All right. I don't know what happened, but I can confidently say before this, I've never had stage fright before today. Yeah. So I wanted to be down there. And when he handed me the mic, he said, go up there. All right. Yeah. So I'm stuck here and I'm scared. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so um, as my dad mentioned last weekend a little bit, um, we recently closed on a new location for my storefront. Yeah. So um, before that, it had been about probably a whole year that we'd been looking for a new place um, from our last place. And uh, we've uh, probably two or three different properties and different buildings fell through before this one that God had put in place for us. Um, so. Once we finally did, God finally gave us this building. You know, we finally closed. We closed like the 1st of November, the 1st of this month. So we had a deadline for Friday, which was Black Friday, on the 25th. So we closed the 1st, and we had this deadline of 25 days to completely rehab an entire building. Yeah. So the building we purchased was, it was a bar when it closed. So we had to turn a bar into a clothing store in 25 days. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so all of us, needless to say, worked within our work hours. You know, we, uh, myself, my dad, Bree, we had our regular day job. Then, prior to our day job and after our day job, we were there always working. But um, even Jeff, within uh, around his work hours, he helped us out quite a bit too. Um, at one point, we had holes in the floor that we had to make sure Kellen didn't fall through for a whole day. So yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so needless to say, we all worked around our work hours, but um, none of it would have been possible if God wasn't working within his work hours. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So um, we were able to get, do what well, God was able to do the impossible and get us done within those, that 25 day deadline. Um, so we opened grand opening last Friday and um, when we came into our new building, we had a line of 50 plus people waiting out front of our door. Yeah, so um, that's, do you have anything? That's pretty much all I have to say is, um, yeah, I'm gonna let her speak now, but uh, none of it would have been possible, obviously, without God having his hand on the whole situation. Um, because we didn't know if we would be able to do it within that time, but he knew the whole time, you know, when he gave it to us that we'd be done within that, that amount of time there. So I'm thankful. I just want to mention we're not as fancy as Jeff. We don't have pictures for you, but you can see it visually if you come to the shop, if you've been to our prior shop, even if you peek through the window of our old shop. It's came a long way, but I just want to say there's something you can feel, too. We actually have heat. At our old building, we did not have heat. We would struggle through the winter with the plug-in um, heaters, and so I just want to say that's one thing I'm grateful the Lord provided. The heater was broken when we got there, and I was like, I'm not doing this again, Lord. We prayed over the heater. We were like, let's bless it, put oil on it, and it worked. So praise God. our strength and so we, we thank him because oftentimes things can happen life starts happening and we can so quickly overlook what it is that God is doing and so he's blessed and he continues to bless and when he does it amen we won't let the rocks cry out for us amen amen uh, the next member of City of Light that we're going to call forth to testify is uh, Jasmine Passmore amen to God be the glory sister Jasmine hallelujah the joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where is your husband? I, I, there's something beautiful. Come on. 
Come on up here, Anthony. There, there's something in this picture of, 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 of a husband and wife. Amen. There's something in this picture. I know it's not always present during sometimes the public spaces, but we believe in honoring God where he has called two people together. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. That, that, that. The, the successes, the successes of one, oftentimes are are dependent upon um, the, the steadfastness of another. And so, with our vision being James one and twenty seven, and with City of Light fighting for fatherless, Amen. For us fighting for the widowed and the orphan, Amen. We want to honor when there are two, Amen. Parkers, Amen. We honor when there are two. We honor when there are two. Sister Jasmine, Amen. Do I get come on, this? Come, yeah, come, come on up here. I'm going to get this generation used to being here. I won't be here forever, amen? So we need to get them used to being in position, amen? Hallelujah. It's funny that um, on the day I have to speak up here, the church is packed, so yeah. <laughs> um, so as most of you know, um, I don't do this. I don't speak. Uh, my hands are shaking. But um, I felt like when Pastor Jeff asked me, because I've been struggling, a lot of you know that Yes, I've been blessed with another baby on the way. <clears throat> but I will say that um, it has not been an easy journey. And I think I struggled the most because I'm still in it. And um, I, you know, with testimonials, you're like, yes, we worked, we prayed, we did this, we did this, and God healed, God heard, God answered, and we're delivered, and this is the end. But I still am, I'm here, I'm still sick, but I will tell you, a month and a half ago, I would not be here, I would probably be somewhere throwing up. Um, I will give you a quick synopsis. I was diagnosed with hyperemesis, um, which is just literally excessive vomiting during your pregnancy. Um, so the first month and a half um, I would have ER visits in and out because I wasn't able to hold food or water down um, it was just a struggle medications infusions uh, twice a week just so I can get through the week I will say that now that I'm getting better I can get through the day without throwing up that's praise God <laughs> um, but I will say that during all of this, you know, you're always like, God, why me? Why? Why me? Why Why does this have to happen to me? I, I do this, I do this, and I think the point of it all is, at the end, wh who, who are you now? And um, I have always been a people pleaser, and I found myself at work, even though I, I couldn't make it through the day. I know I was not able to make it through the day. But because I wanted to be a good team player, and I knew that like, if I wasn't there, appointments wouldn't get done. People wouldn't be able to be seen. I'm a lactation consultant, so there was like moms. I work for WIC, so um, I had one-on-one uh, -on -one appointments for latch assessments, and I was like, I gotta help these moms. I gotta help these people. I have to be here. And I would be on the floor in my office, sick, not able to function, but still trying. And I found myself being more of an advocate for myself telling myself you know jasmine you have to put yourself first sometimes you have to make sure that you're good for yourself so that you can give to others i knew that i wasn't my best self so i couldn't give my best self um so i've been working on getting myself better really like when people say hey i'm here for you I'm like really trying to like not be like, these are my responsibilities. Sophie's my responsibility. I don't need to be passing her around to people. I've been trying to like be like, Jasmine, these people are here for you. Just lean on them when you need it. Lean on your husband when you need it. I mean, you're not superwoman. We don't have superpowers. Um, we have a village for a reason. Um, so lean on that. Um, and I learned that. I'm learning all these things and I think this is why I'm hard-headed and I think God's like you know what extreme this is what you need to learn and um, I'm getting there I feel better I'm happy that like at this point I probably would have been so nauseous right now I'd be like oh my god I gotta sit down I need some water I need a snack um, I do have snacks all the time so if you need a snack I got you um, <laughs> but it's just it's 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 I 
I'm just happy. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> God bless him. The, the joy, joy of the Lord, Lord is my strength. The joy, oh the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, oh he is my hope. The joy, oh the joy. Hallelujah. As our worship team gets ready to transition us into our next worship song, I just want to remind us of um, our conversation upon last week about the, the, this process of being disciplined and the process of, of, of carrying our cross. Amen. Pastor Jeff took it from me and put it up there. Amen. From last week, he didn't want me to hurt myself. He said, Jesus has already done that, Pastor. You don't need to. But if you remember, and you can recall our two points from last week, Sister Jasmine, it was that, that people struggle because they hold on and they, and they hold others. Amen, Sister Jasmine. I just want to deposit that. They, they hold on too long to some things that they weren't supposed to, um, and then they hold on to others' crosses that they're not supposed to. Amen, somebody. And so we thank God that he's freeing you in that, Sister Jasmine, and the Passmore family, that they might be loved by those around. Amen, that, that, that somebody can pour into them. And so we thank God for all these opportunities where we get to taste and see who he is and taste and see his goodness. And so we want to lean into you, Jesus in this season. We want to declare and, and redefine and, and redeclare for some that, that you are our cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, not the one that, we will not be the ones that, that rejected this cornerstone that is Jesus Christ. Amen. All who are able, if you will, with me, amen, stand to your feet as we walk into our next worship set, amen, before our following testimonies. Cornerstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Mm. Long lay the world in sin and ever pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new sure how you feel about this ballad, Oh Holy Night, but if you plan on attending this church over this season, you will get used to hearing it. It was what took place on that holy night that allows us the strength to be victorious through those night fights. How many of you remember that conversation about those 
night fights, those, those things that happen at night, those thoughts that run through your mind at three in the morning that nobody knows about, those, those, those things that have been tormenting you that you don't share with anybody, but that night fight, amen, it was what took place on that one night that allows me to make it through last night, amen, and, 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 and that allowed me to be, I'm just talking about uh, those things that happen at night. There's some stuff that happens at night sometimes those fights that happen at night, that fight between you and you. testimony, amen, will be coming from um, Sister Nicole Parks, amen, and she can tell and will tell in her own words what took place the nights leading up to her, her testimony, amen. Her husband will be also standing alongside her that there were some nights leading up to her, her procedure and her process that uh, her husband was praying and seeking prayer. Her husband was standing in the gap for his wife, amen. Her husband was, 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 was with her and, and standing for her, and she was standing even for herself. I, I'll share with you just what led up to the procedure, and Sister Nikki can share with you and, and Pastor Parks what happened thereafter. But up to this procedure, leading up to this procedure, I was pressing to, to be with with the parks. I was pressing, amen. We were busy and things were happening and I was bothering them and they kept trying to let me off the hook. And I said, no, no, you're not going to let me off the hook, Pastor Parks. I, I sensed in his spirit that um, the good thing that the Lord had sent to him was going to be placed in the hands of somebody else for a procedure. And if I could be honest, amen, Pastor Parks, his spirit was a little troubled, amen. I, 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 my wife had just went through it a couple months prior. And uh, yeah, that's a trying place when he's called you to be the shepherd and the steward over your home and you've got to trust another. So long story short, to my own two to three minutes, I, I made it to, to the Parks residence, amen. And um, Pastor Parks and I were, were preparing to berate heaven on behalf of Sister Nikki. And with tears running down her eyes, she says, guys, it's going to be okay. I'm, I'm going to be all right. Yes. We, we were ready for war, amen, and we, we still went to war, but Sister Nikki had already heard from her father. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. She had already been given a word. She had already been given confirmation. Amen. And so while we went to pray for her, <laughs> she spoke a word over us. Amen. Sister Nikki, if you're able to make it here, if not, we'll come to you. Amen. To God be the glory. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This ain't a sad testimony. Amen. This ain't a sad testimony. Come on. So I got my own coat puller. Amen. <laughs> but I give God all the glory and all the praise. I thank God <laughs> for the city of light. The women of God. I didn't tell, like, for, for all you know, y'all know me. Now I'm waterworks, so this is just what I do. But in um, women's ministry, I had shared that I was going to have this surgery the lady kind. And, um, you know, I was, you know, it, it's, it, this has been something in the works for years and I've been putting it off for all, for all the right reasons in my defense. And then it pandemic hit and then, you know, you know the story. So the doctor had given us a certain expectation and I was believing the Lord, let it be minimal, let it, let it be short, let it be whatever. That was the, that was the extent of it. Um, the women of God prayed over me. And then the, the Sunday before the surgery, I'm here working the altar. And then all of a sudden, these ladies come here. They come with purpose. They came with purpose to the altar to get me. <laughs> and 
what I can say is uh, the testimony is supposed to be about God's provision. And provision talks about a thing that's supplied. Well, let me tell you something. My personality is to seek peace and pursue it, right? Well, after that prayer, beyond my own understanding, dumb women of God, they pray everything. Can I just say it like that? They prayed everything. Some I didn't even understand. The Lord gave them something about what I was going to go through. But I had, it was a ridiculous piece. That's what I'm going to call it. A ridiculous piece now. You all know I'm a nurse, and I'm used to taking care of people. But when I tell you, all kinds of stuff was happening. And the, 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 I was supposed to go into surgery. I was supposed to be there first thing in the morning. It got changed. We got there. It got changed. It got changed. It got changed three times. I didn't go into surgery. I was supposed to go into I can't even remember. It was in the morning. I didn't go until late afternoon. In fact, it was 5.30. And I didn't get done until 10.30. Didn't matter. I didn't know. Because <laughs> the Lord had me. And as, you know, normally for somebody like me, I would have started, you know, directing traffic from my bed. I would have started doing it. My, the nurse's nurse is behind me. She know. I was in complete peace. Praise God. I was. I was in complete peace. I, girl, listen. Like we're on a telephone. Listen. I can't even explain it. It's ridiculous. I was completely at peace. I was. I expected to be out of surgery for dinner. I had told my husband all the stuff I wanted to eat because I had been fasting and everything. I had a whole list. And I missed dinner. I was on that table for five hours. Thank God for good medicine because I don't remember none of it. But he was there by himself, but not by himself, advocating for me. And I just can't explain, but it's certainly indebted to the expression of love, like John 13 says in 34. I have to, I have to just say, because it, it was in the song. John 13, 34 says, a new commandment I give you, Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And by this, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples yeah. if you love one another. So the second part of this is the aftermath. Because I was such at peace, I didn't even think about what was on the other side <laughs> as I'm holding my stomach now I didn't even think about it I was such at peace I'm the planner when stuff happens I'm the one that got you know the blood pressure all of the stuff I didn't even think about it those of you that sister sister Julie God bless you who set up the setup I, overwhelmed with love didn't even know. Uh, and so when I spoke to pastors here, I said, look, this thing is going to be a testimony. I, I didn't, Lord, you know, I wasn't thinking it was going to be like that. But it was a testimony, and it still is. How you all loved us showed up. Yeah. And I'm a little guarded, even though I love people, but, you know, in my space is in my space. Y'all was all up in my house. I was in my pajamas. I didn't even care. We ate. We talked. It didn't even matter. I love each and every one of you. To God be the glory. Lord, bless these people, God. Because you walk the scriptures. You walk the scriptures. People in our life said, wow. You are loved. Did not that we didn't know it. But God knows. Yes, he does. 
God knows. Yes, he does. So I just say thank God for each and every one of you. My husband has uh, had the opportunity to, to be in the footsteps that I've had to be. And I know he found it not to be easy. But I thank God for my husband. I thank God for my children. Because he, you know, I was trying to be Nurse Nikki. And, but I was so at peace, I didn't even think about myself. And my husband stepped up and said, oh, no, you need that. And I said, thank you. Because I didn't even know. <laughs> So that's, that's all I wanted to share with you, that the peace that surpasses all understanding and the love that we have for one another, that's the provision that he had for me. Just say that one more time, Sister Julie, to the parks. We, we love y'all. We love you. When God would use the hands and the hearts of real people, from the beginning of time, he's been using people. He, he could do what he wants to show his glory, to express his splendor, he could just open up a small space in the clouds and just peek down and say that I am God. He could choose perfect people who would live for an eternity on earth to just walk and say that he is God. The way that the airplanes ride in the sky, special messages, he could just grab a finger and, and cursive beautiful calligraphy right in the clouds that I am God. He could take full control of your heart and your mind and just simply say that I am God. This is the God that we're talking about, what he's able to do, but instead of doing any of those things, he chooses broken messed up used to be sinners like you and me to love to live to express his goodness in this land I, I want you to really think about that he could just crack this guy open and, 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 and peek his face through and say hey I am God he's able he could, with beautiful handwriting, just write it in the clouds and keep it there forever because he's able. But instead, he would choose to use people like you and me. What a privilege. What trust he has in us. That amazes me. He, he, he can do whatever he wants to do. He can use whatever he wants to use. Someone is sitting here right now scratching your head because it doesn't really add up why he would choose to use people, Sister Nikki, to love you. He could have provided a banquet for you on the porch with just a whisper. But he would choose to use people. I want somebody to go home and, and, and wrestle with that that on purpose. And, and, I, and I'm not telling you that this is not a fresh revelation. This isn't something new. He's been doing this since the Old Testament. Since, since the beginning of time, he's been using people. We can't say that he's wrong for it. What I'm starting to believe is that he was right for it. And then I believe even more that you are right for it. And that you, come on somebody, you're right for it. You, 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 were, you were chosen, you were handpicked, you were hand selected. Am, am I wrong? Am I off? Is my theology broken? City of Light will be those people. 
We will be those people. We will be those people. We're right for it. We're right for it. Huh. Come on. We've got two more songs and we're going to walk ourselves into fellowship. Maybe one more and just an invitation into this, this series. Tasting and seeing. Come on, worship team. I'm giving you a pastoral disclaimer. You better be mindful about singing those lyrics. More of him ultimately results in less of you. You, you, you know that, right? I, I, I'm just telling you this as a disclaimer. I'm, I'm not trying to discourage you from not singing this because in order to be his hands and feet, you, you're going to need, we're going to need, I'm going to need, City of Light will need more of you, God. But I just want to give this as a disclaimer that more of him results in less of you. Uh, last week we talked about this, this personality and what we're holding on to, and holding on to our experiences from life and all the things that I've been and all of the, the stuff that I am. But I, I shared with you also that um, 
Freedom is really, really difficult to obtain if the cost of being you is too high. And so we hold on to these things. We hold on to these, 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 these issues, these ideals, these thoughts, um, these persons. We hold on to these things. And Jesus says, wait a minute. I actually need you to set that down. And I shared with you that if both hands are carrying your cross, then you have no hands free to carry your past. I want us to continue to sing this. I want us to worship here. But I'm telling you, that's where transformation starts to happen. That's when your friends and your home girls and your home start telling you that you're acting funny. That's when they start calling you a little strange and different and, 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 and yeah. That, that ought to be the place in your conversation with some of your old people that you start shouting when they start declaring. Listen, that's your stamp of authenticity when they start telling you you're acting funny and you're acting different and you're acting strange. You ought to say hallelujah, thank you Jesus because that's your seal of approval that you've made it into a place, come on Sister Jen, that you've made it into a place where you no longer act like you. When they start saying, oh, oh, you, you, you acting funny, hard. You don't act like you used to. Tell them, thank you. When they say, Bree, you don't call us to come around no more. We tell them, thank you. You don't seem to like what you used to like and do what you used to do and act like you used to act. Tell them, hallelujah, thank you. Thank you. That means I made it. <laughs> that means I made it. When I stopped looking like me, and start looking like him. Oh man, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't contain. Oh. Yeah. I you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Thank you, Jesus. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love, no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Hallelujah, somebody. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. And keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Face for you. 
voices. Listen, listen, that, come on, give him glory. So, so, so as the lights turn on uh, and throughout the house and, and worship team, don't go too far. I, I don't plan on being too long. But I, I want to share with this with you, amen, before we introduce you to our, our next series. I want to share this with you that the, 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 the amen is just as valuable as the words that were spoken. The, the, the amen, <laughs> for those of you who don't know the lyrics or you couldn't catch the rhythm, the, the amen is just as valuable as the words that were sung over you. Because amen simply means, it, it, it simply means all that was just declared, let it be so. For my generation, for my children and their children and their children, and some, let it be so. May his favor be up, let it be so. To a thousand, let it be so. What about the children who aren't walking with, let it. What about, come on somebody, somebody just had to catch that one. What, what, what about the ones that might be a little wayward right now, uh-uh, let it be so. Hmm. 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 I'm not sure where they're going to land. I'm not sure where. A thousand generations and their children and they, it might not, they might not come back to one of their children, bring them back, amen. But it don't matter when it happens, Jesus, just that it happens. I'm not even preaching today. Let me get where we going. Amen. I, I just love when the Word of God is the Word of God and when it stands on what it stands on, and that is Him and Him alone. I thought, well, maybe they won't be. Maybe they will be because He said so. Oh, we're so quick to doubt because of what we see. Yeah, let me get where I'm going. We got a couple minutes. We, we're trying to get, get out of here. We just seen three different testimonies, three, three different gifts, actually four, Jeff started it off. All of these gifts different, but all received by the hands of the same God. We heard the Simpsons, Pastor Jeff's observation, because he was a huge part of this. He and Pastor Parks and Elder Harold, they were a huge part of this transformation, and so we've seen their testimony. We've seen the Shazers, the, the younger version of the Shazer family. They, they received God's provision as their gift. And, and the Passamores received God's strength even in the middle of it. The Parks, they, they received God's gift of abundance after. Hmm. As each testified, it was glaringly obvious that the gift they received from the Lord was different. You tracking with me? What I'm trying to say is that the gifts that you receive have a shape. I'm trying to simply make it plain that the gifts that you and I receive have a shape. Some gifts have obvious shapes. Thank you, Mom. I would have not been able to wrap this on my best day. <laughs> Some gifts that we receive have an obvious shape. What is this? What is this? You think it's heavy or light? You better hope so, Ellie. <laughs> Small. What about this? You still want to play catch, Ellie? <laughs> Obvious shapes. This is not cottage cheese, Sister Norma. 
You, you, she sure did. Sister Norma made it up. She, <laughs> she certainly did make it up. She blessed us. She blessed us, her and her husband. What are these? Yes. Brother Teddy, I'll put them back. Don't look at me like that. What about this? Ma, ma, yeah, mom got. What about this? What is it now? <laughs> yes. We belong to city of, and you can't even tell. Yeah. 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 That was their next guess. <laughs> Why? He gave me this church, so I'm going to love him. As this year began, City of Light, we started out by having a conversation about your shape. And we started out this year having a conversation about your specific piece of the puzzle. And I think it's only fitting that we close out the year with the same topic of conversation. The gifts that you and I receive from the Father certainly have a shape, but so do the gifts that we possess, Brother Adrian. The gifts that we receive absolutely have a shape, as do the gifts that we possess. Can I share with you this portion of Scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, the New Living Translation. I won't be up here even 10 minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, the NLT is what I'll be reading from. Verse 4, these words are left on record. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. Verse 6, God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. Verse 7, a spiritual gift is given unto each of us so that we can help each other. Hallelujah. Verse 8, to one person the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another and to someone else that one spirit gives the gift of healing. Verse 10, he gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Shh. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Verse 11 in our final verse, it is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. As we share in this conversation of gift giving and gift receiving this season, we at City of Light will certainly not overlook the greatest gift given unto man. I'm going to say that one more time. Because this season is very attractive. It's very popular. But we at City of Light will not overlook the greatest gift given unto man. That is Christ Jesus. I have to say that one more time. The greatest gift given unto mankind is Christ Jesus. I cannot preach nor teach anyone anything different. Uh, there's gifts of, 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 of hospitality. There are all sorts of gifts that we have, that we receive, that we claim. Uh, this is a season when giving starts to go up and generosity is present. But it has to be for me in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
or it doesn't count. So as we walk into this series where we're mentioning gift receiving and gift giving, I was hanging with Pastor Jeff and Pastor Parks yesterday and we just had a brief discussion and in this discussion we realized that some gifts come from some very unsuspecting places. Some gifts come from some very unsuspecting places. My family and I, uh, Sister Norma just re reminded me, my family and I were so blessed on Thanksgiving morning um, to receive an amazing gift. I, I did not know where it came from. Uh, and I got a text from Brother Howard, Elder Howard, and I said, Elder Howard, man, you are special. You are amazing. Thank you. He says, I'm just special enough to know where your address is. <laughs> he said, I, I, I didn't make this. And, and so we received this amazing gift from, from an amazing family. But I was not expecting that gift at all. And so I realized that some gifts come from some very unsuspecting places. In the Bible, those places were places like Bethlehem and Calvary. Some gifts come from some very unsuspecting places. Some gifts seem a little out of reach. They, they, they seem a little far. Some gifts seem a little tough to obtain. They, some gifts just don't make any sense, like the gift of salvation and the baptism of the Spirit. Oh, we're going to teach in this season. Is that right, Pastor Jeff? <laughs> so, some gifts seem a little, little, little out of reach. They seem a little, little far, a little hard to obtain. But there's, there's one gift, one gift that has seemingly become traditional. I need you to stick with me. There's one gift that has seemingly become traditional, and thus it's become easily overlooked. Because every year right around this time, this special gift seems to begin appearing in front yards, on Christmas cards, in living rooms, and even in the church. But the world doesn't seem to care very much about this gift until right around this season. This gift is difficult to find in any other time during the year. Does anybody know the gift that I'm talking about? What? No, who said it? Over here? Jesus. Actually, I'm talking about a candy cane. I'm actually talking about a candy cane. Who likes candy canes? Who wants a big candy cane? I'm, I'm shifting over, Brother Sean. Who, who wants a big candy cane? Like who? We were handing out candy canes, and, and it looked like the smallest man in the church, my man, Kellen, had a candy cane the size of this rake. <laughs> I think that candy cane and Kellen weigh about the same. So he just drug it up to his Sunday school room. It's probably broken by the time he gets it up the stairs because he's got to drag it. right? But, but, but I like candy canes, and, and, and I, I just want to talk to you about this candy cane, because some gifts just don't make a lot of sense. But who really, really, really likes candy canes, like big candy canes? So what if I were to go into this, this bag up here, this, this sack up here, and what if I were to begin pulling out a candy cane? And then I started to tell you that some gifts, we say we want them, but then they, uh, they're more than we expected, and we think that, whoa, <laughs> we think that they're like, it's enough, but then, so, so if this really were a candy cane, this was really a candy cane, if that was really a candy cane, it wouldn't make any sense. how all of that came out of, it, it would make more sense if there was just something small in here. I'll leave that for another week. 
as we're walking into this series, I just want us to think about some of the gifts that come our way that don't make a lot of sense. Some gifts that are actually greater than we can imagine. A gift that's larger than we expected. I want to talk about Jesus. I want to talk about us. I want to talk about the gift we receive and how sometimes, yes, he's overlooked until this season. Sometimes it's just traditional to make it to church during this season. Sometimes he comes out of the basement and he lands in the front yard in a manger with hay. Sometimes he makes his way to the front of a, of a card and the front of a conversation. But do we really understand the size and the magnitude of this gift? This is going to be a different Advent season for us. It started last year at Christmas Eve when I gave you a candle that didn't get lit. Just to remind you of your responsibility. This is going to be a teaching season. We're going to talk about not just the gift that we receive, but the gift that we possess. The worship team led us, and we were just asking for more of Jesus. More of you, God. More of him is going to result in less of us. Can I be honest for just a moment? This whole series shook me a little bit. Because more of him resulting in less of us. More teaching, less gift unwrapping may result in less people in the pews. Just being honest, I'm confessing. More desiring change, more, more expecting change, more expecting Jesus to fill us might actually result in less people being here. But we can't change a city in our own strength. can't even shift the atmosphere in our own homes and our own strength. We can't rebuild marriages. We can't rebuild neighborhoods. We can't rebuild families with our own strength. So we've got to leave out of this Advent season. We've got to walk into next year full of Jesus. We've got to pull things out that don't even seem like they're supposed to come out of. We need more than can be seen with the natural eye. You guys were expecting just a small candy cane. Sometimes we say we have Jesus, but we expect this. Just want to invite everybody here to tune in, both online and in-house, as we walk into this series for Advent Defined. My gift has a shape. My gift has a shape. I invite you to stand to your feet throughout the house. Some gifts are greater, even greater than we can imagine, larger than we expected. Larger than we expected. We want to experience you, Jesus. We need to. Our heart says we want more of you, God, but the truth is we need more of you. <laughs> I need more of you to walk in what you've called me to. We need more of you, oh God, Lord, to transform and light up a city the way you've called us to. We need more of you, oh God, Lord, to minister to, to love 
to steward, oh God, the people that you've given us. I thank you for every one of those testimonies, Lord, today. That you said that's how we overcome, by your blood, Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, that you have given us living proof in the testimonies of these sons and daughters that you are still moving and you're still proving how great you are. That Jesus, you still are in the miracle working business. You're still doing all that you said that you would do. But it's this season that we want more of you. We want to not be, 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 be uh, uh, brought in and bought in, oh God, Lord, into the, the, the world and, and what they tell us, oh God. We, we want to not be consumed, oh God, Lord, by all of the things around us, Lord. But we want to see you. I need to see you. As a church, we need to see you, Jesus. We need to possess you and we need to possess your love, oh God, Lord. We need this to be different, oh God, this season. Lord, we desire and we believe for more and greater testimonies, oh God. We believe, oh God, Lord, that, 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 that the fear of the church emptying because we're teaching about you is a lie. But, oh God, we believe that doors will be burst down and kicked down, oh God, because you and you will be lifted up and you said you'll draw all men unto you, oh God. And so we believe you for it even today, even in this season, Lord, as your name is being declared, Jesus, as you're being lifted on high, that you'll draw men and women unto you. Lord, we would ask that you would allow us to be charged as we go out into these, 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 these shopping lines, into shopping centers, oh God, into our workplaces, Lord, that we would be charged in this season, oh God, that we would make your name great because you already are. We would pray, oh God, that we would be a people of courage, unashamed of your gospel, oh God, in our living and in our speaking. Let us love our neighbors in this season, oh God, like we've never loved them before. We need more of you, God. We need more of you, God. We would ask, oh God, Lord, that we would be a church that as we're set forth on mission this season to the outside, that we would also be a church that's set forth on mission collectively on the inside. Lord, that the women's lunches would be amazing. That our vision, so God, would be empowering, Lord. That opportunities to serve, to share, to give, to love, oh God, Lord, would overflow from this place. We thank you and we praise you, oh God, Lord, as we get an opportunity and we get our hearts prepared, Lord, for fellowship. That, oh God, as we continue to hear the details of the testimonies, oh God, that are coming. Lord, that we might inspire and encourage one another, Lord, to greater works. We thank you even in your name, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. An unsuspecting gift from unsuspecting places. We bless you, Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you would keep us full. Keep us encouraged. Keep us broken to our own will and open to yours. Father, we love you and thank you again for setting us on mission, for setting us on a clear path, oh God. Let our path be narrowed, Jesus, to where it's you and only you. That we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that's due your name. Yes, you. We thank you, we honor you, we bless you. In your name, Jesus. We thank God for an opportunity to be together again. We invite you over to the fellowship hall as we can hear more details about some of the testimonies shared so that we can, as brothers and sisters, share some testimonies that might not have even come through a microphone but happened to us this season. Places that we've tasted and seen the goodness of God so that we might strengthen and encourage our brother and sister that he's still in the miracle working business. He's still full of grace. He's still full of love and compassion. That he's still strengthening. He's still healing. He's still moving. He's still proving just how great he is before, in the middle, and after. You're good, God. And we thank you for it. May God bless you. God keep you. We invite you into our Advent series. My gift has a shape. My gift has a shape. May God bless you. May God keep you. We invite everybody who is able and who has time to join us over in the fellowship hall for our last of our Taste and See series. I believe we have apple crisp today, amen, from the Hodges. And so we're grateful for it, amen. Service is over. You are dismissed into service unto this city, amen. Amen. Set a fire.
fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. To set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Show us more of you, God. Show us more of you, God. Show us more, show us more, show us more, show us more, show us more of you, God. Show us more of you, God. Show us more, show us more, show us more, show us more, show us more of you, God. Show us more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that we can't explain, that we can't control. Show us more of you, God. Show us more.